Chapter 12, The Law of Magnetic Thought Attraction, The Kind of People That Are Liked. The universe pays every man in his own coin. If you smile, it smiles with you in return. If you frown, you will be frowned at. If you sing, you will be invited in gay community. If you think, you will be entertained by thinkers. If you love the world and earnestly seek for the good therein, you will be surrounded by loving friends, and nature will pour into your lap the treasures of earth. It is natural for us to like sunshiny, cheerful, bright, and helpful people. The grumblers, fault-finders, slanders are never liked. We like the people that are looking for the good, not the bad in anyone. People with serpent tongues, idle gossip, temper losers develop ugly natures that are never liked. It is not the one harder to be in the habit of going around looking for the good and beautiful instead of the reverse. It is just another case, as it seems easier to do the wrong than the right. The great secret of contented and discontented people is that the former are looking for the cheerful and bright and the latter for the dark and gloomy. There is always a brighter side and a darker side. Always look for the brighter side. It will make a great influence in your character and your happiness, prosperity, and success in life in general. There is always a light behind the dark. Look for it. You will see it. Think helpful and inspiring thoughts and you will be looking at many things in a different light. You can transform your character in a remarkable short time. We hear people say, I could be happy under different circumstance. I say positively that circumstance had little to do with it. It is your temperament, your disposition, which makes you enjoy or not enjoy. Think of people that are very unhappy. We can see them grumbling about circumstance, hard times, lack of wealth, when you are a great deal better off than many others. These people would think you very fortunate if you were in precisely their condition. If you have been in a habit of complaining about your business, talking evil about others, just try the reverse. Assume an encouraging, prosperous air, and you will soon see a way out of your difficulties at changing your condition. Remember first, last, and all the time, the strong, positive man does not talk or think in the negative. He never lets himself feel, I can't, but I will. Brooding over your ills, the irritable soul, creates the evils feared. The Value of Cheerfulness the successful man is cheerful and hopeful. He has a smile on his face and meets everything that comes in the same way. The cheerful man is creating new power, while the pessimist is destroying his power. There is nothing that will help you meet the hard times in the road, sweeten life, and take out drudgery like a sunny, optimistic disposition. Two may have practically the same ability, but if one is a cheerful thinker while the other is despondent and gloomy, the former will leave him far behind. Cheerfulness is a tonic to the mind. It dispels friction, worries, anxieties, and it will often turn disagreeable experiences into agreeable ones. You can do your best work only when you are in a cheerful state of mind. When you are out of temper, your entire physical machinery is out of working order. It should be your plan to follow the following philosophy. Try as much as you call to let nothing distress you, and you take everything that happens as for the best. Believe that this is your duty and that your error is in not so doing. The next time you are at walking, make it a point to look at everyone you can. See how many you see that look as though they're happy. Notice the ugly, grouchy expression on most people. You can make life one continuous round of sadness instead of joy and gladness. How few there are who bring more sunshine into our lives, who scatter gladness and cheerfulness wherever they go. It is so seldom that we see one of these cheerful faces that everyone is attracted by it. Get the habit of looking pleasant or radiating cheer wherever you go. This will make you happier than own many houses or any kind of possession. It is free to you. All you have to do is develop it. Your ability to radiate sunshine will add greatly to your power. It is not really hard to transform a gloomy disposition into a cheerful one. True, a cheerful face is but the reflection of a big glorious heart. You cannot look apart unless you feel it. A simple way of giving cheerfulness. Take an interest in what is going on in the world around you. Take an interest in those whom you meet. Try to open up their clam-like disposition. Be friendly to all. All these will help you develop cheerfulness. We will never find out what is good and noble in others until we find similar qualities in ourselves. Many people think they are all right and they think you are all right. It is really wonderful the effect that one cheerful frame of mind can have in a crowd or gathering of gloomy, melancholy people. Let such a one enter into a room where the conversation is lagging and where the people feel strained. Immediately all who are present change to a joyous spirit. Their tongues are let loose, and almost instantly the whole atmosphere vibrates with gladness and good cheer. We know the need of sunshine for plants, but we do not know that sunshiny dispositions are also needed. If you will pay your hand some dividends to cultivate sunshine in more of your life, 
It is hard to estimate the immense value of a sunshiny disposition. It acts as a magnet to draw to us the good things in life. In every person who comes near you, look for what is good and strong. Honor that. Rejoice in it. As you can, try to imitate it, and your faults will drop off like dead leaves when a time comes. Rushkin Say to yourself, I will never speak unkindly of anyone. If I cannot see something good, I will see nothing and say nothing. You will notice it will make a wonderful difference in you. Rapidly you will notice how different you look at life. You will be able to see joy and peace everywhere. If you will form the habit of looking on the bright side of everything, there will be little trouble to bother you. A great many charming characters are hidden under a mask by the habit of making cynical remarks. It keeps out of sight your happy, cheerful, wholesome self. Overcome the fearing tide. There's a sparkling gleam of sunshine waiting on the other side. We do not realize that when we are talking of our business or our poor health and in general that we are attracting these very influence. On the other hand, let us think and top the opposite, and we will attract the opposite. We will become positive, vital, and magnetic. Negative thoughts will kill ambition. It will make your life a failure. As long as you hold to these, you will never be powerful or magnetic. The negative person is a slave. He slays self-confidence instead of increasing it. A man's station in life is determined by his self-faith and self-confidence. You will never advance until you think you can. Never think someone is better than you. Never place a limit on yourself. Do away with all negative thoughts and think of being powerful. He can who thinks he can is a saying that will always be true. The determined man makes a road over which others follow him. He laughs at barriers that stop others, and he jumps over them as if they were nothing. You want to cultivate deep conviction. Don't let anyone's opinion change you. You have a mind of your own. Use it. If you let everyone's opinion affect you, you will not have a deep conviction. Your thoughts will not be backed up by your confidence. The majority of people are not capable of deep conviction. They are superficial. They are easily changed by others' thoughts. They succumb to the first argument. They are just between, never on one side of the fence or the other. They are always willing to agree with the other fellow instead of having the other fellow think as they do. There is no backbone to such people. You want to cultivate positiveness and decision in everything you do. If you do not have the power to stand by your resolution, no one will have confidence in you. You often hear people say, Oh, I think he's a good man, but by their tone you can tell they are not wholly sure. You want to act so there will be no doubt in the mind that you are all right. You want to inspire confidence in those you meet. You want them to believe that you amount to something, that you are capable of doing important things. To accomplish anything worthwhile, you have got to have a deep conviction that you can achieve whatever you undertake. Your determination must be strong. Such a man has influence that amounts to something. He is not easily changed to be like another who holds different opinions. Once you are aroused to the fact that you can be what you wish to be, that you can do what you attempt if you will cultivate the power of affirmation and hold in mind persistently the thought that you are going to accomplish what you wish, you will be able to change yourself in a short time, and you can realize your highest dream. Remember this, that if your Creator has implanted in your breast a desire to do something, He has also seen to it that you have the ability to do it. On the other hand, do not think of anything that you do not want to have happen. Do not let anything make you unhappy or depress you. Let nothing ruffle your harmonious nature. You have no weakness unless you think you have. It is your thinking that makes you weak. If you feel yourself getting out of sorts, discouraged, blue, disheartened, you will find you can dispel all these thoughts almost instantly by thinking of something pleasant, a more agreeable experience, or by thinking of something that will give you pleasure. When thought is changed, your feeling is changed. No matter what your environment is, by thinking as you should, you can change your outlook and make yourself happy. Thoughts of the wrong kind deplete you, but the right kind are a great tonic. Keep this affirmation before you. All that I dream of, all that I long to be, will be within my reach if I affirm sufficiently strong and focus my faculties with sufficient intentness on a single purpose. Whatever you wish to accomplish, you must concentrate on the jack-of-all-trades never amounts to anything. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to concentrate on being a lawyer and not being a doctor or something else at the same time. It is concentration that brings to you what you wish, whether it is money, health, position, or the love of someone. No one would ever win the love of another until they concentrate all their love on that one. Whatever you wish to accomplish, affirm persistently and concentrate all your power on securing it, and when your mind is positive enough, it can create what you wish. 
we can become a magnet and draw to us whatever we wish.